Everybody seems to want something for nothing nowadays, don't they? No, I'm not talking about those who find new ways of obtaining hard-working, creatively-minded people's work off the internet without paying for it, or anyone who thinks anything they watch on YouTube is theirs to own by right because artists should only produce free content for YouTube. I think I've touched on this subject often enough. I'm talking about the sort of people who want a piece of the action at special events on Heritage Railways without paying for entry. The feasibility of the Enthusiast Gala Weekend has been brought under question by the railway press in recent years, but it's an issue that remains ongoing, seeing as some Gala Weekends run at a profit, but others have not been so lucky. Compared to the more family-orientated events, where you can attract twice or even four times as many people because Mummy and Daddy have to come along to look after the kids, the Enthusiast Gala Weekends tend to be more of a going concern. All railways are at a risk of running a gala weekend at a loss, but the issue I'm referring to can affect some railways more than others. See, while line siding on the Bobman and Wentford Railway during their awesome steam gala weekend in September 2016, and before you ask any questions, yes, the Beaties are in the works, but no, I've no idea when that video is going to be finished, I started chatting to a group of photographers who said to me, Have you seen the price for this year's event? £15? I'm not paying for that! I can visit the West Somerset Railway for that money! And that may well be true, but let's try and analyse the bare necessities, shall we? Steam railways need to cover their operating costs, and these days, those costs are only going to go up. For more than 10 years now, the price of coal has been hovering around £100 a tonne, if you're lucky. Low loaders aren't exactly cheap to hire by the hour, and maintenance of the engines is another can of worms. Normally these expenses are higher at gala weekends, often due to busier timetables featuring more trains run by more locomotives, sometimes even paying higher fees for hosting a guest engine, or several. In this case, what's normally a single engine operation was being worked by the two BTs, a Pannier and the T9. That's three small tank engines and a small-ish tender engine. Now straight away, that's roughly four times as much the daily amount of coal to consume. Now okay, those four combined may not consume as much per weekend as, say, a pair of big mainline engines on an extended stint of the Great Britain Rail Tour, but it still warrants the extra expense alone, especially considering it was the last time both the BTs would be seen together before 30585 was withdrawn for overhaul. The big underlying problems, which even on normal days places like Bodmin continue to face, are competition and accessibility. Bodmin is situated in the very heart of Cornwall, almost in the middle of nowhere compared to the two major towns at either end of the poorest county in England. While popular with tourists and publicly accessible by rail, sort of, it's understandable that Bodmin can still suffer from taking ages to reach from anywhere. So given ordinary circumstances, the footfall is unlikely to be that great compared to somewhere like the West Somerset Railway. The latter's footfall is often much higher, given the fact it's less than an hour's train ride away from Bristol, it's just a few miles from the main trunk road to the southwest, and it finishes right next to the seaside. To put accessibility by public transport into perspective, it currently takes as long to travel the 89.6 miles from Taunton to Bodmin by rail as it takes to travel more than 163 miles from London to Taunton by rail. Add the fact that the main roads are much slower in Cornwall, so unless you're local, it's not exactly an ideal place for a day trip. Even the Isle of Wight steam railway can be reached to and from London in a day. Admittedly a very long day, but still a day. Now okay, the world doesn't live in London, thank goodness. But my point is, a small railway out in the sticks with limited access is less likely to pull the crowds than a big one within easy reach of a well-connected metropolis. And given how there seems to be fewer and fewer people prepared to go outside or can even afford to go anywhere these days, the problem of who's prepared to go where is likely to become more challenging as time goes by. Whether you put it down to ease of access, marketing or sheer preference, the West Somerset carries more passengers per year than Bodmin which means there's more people to pay for tickets, allowing said tickets to be sold for less. Let's say for a moment that it's not a railway we're talking about, but a model show. And for argument's sake, that model show has to make a minimum of £1,000 to cover their costs for the weekend. They can make that by either selling 1,000 tickets at £1 each, or 50 tickets at £20 each. In layman's terms, the more tickets you are likely to sell cost-effectively, the cheaper you can afford to sell them. In Bodmin's case, they're less likely to sell as many tickets due to the problems with competition and accessibility they continue to face. So to compensate for that, they may have no choice but to increase the price, meaning passengers would get fewer initial miles to the pound, 
but if the ticket is a day rover, you can travel as many miles as you like, but the railway wouldn't need to attract as many passengers to cover its costs. This would benefit the railway more than flogging them at the same value per mile as the West Somerset, because the overhead costs of fuel, spares and road haulage would still remain in situ. The main difference being that by selling tickets at a higher price, they don't have to sell as many to make some of their initial costs back. At least in theory. But here's what I don't understand from the conversation I had with those photographers. While the Gala Day Rover at Bodmin was £15, the usual Day Rover was £13, just £2 cheaper. It's not as if the extra expense is going to break the bank. I'm not exactly a millionaire swimming in piles of gold that would make Scrooge McDuck think that I was compensating for something, because I'm a British filmmaker, what do you expect? But even I think £2 extra is pretty much nothing. And if you shift enough of those tickets at £2 extra per head, then your costs have a better chance of recuperating. It's just a pity that some people just don't seem to understand that the real victims in a situation like this are the hard-working, underappreciated volunteers who are willingly giving up their warm lions and free Sundays to get up in the freezing cold at four in the morning to light the fires just so we can enjoy the sight of a terrier on a single birdcage coach on the Kent and East Sussex. Now that's something you don't see every day, is it? A heritage railway may be seen as a community concern run by volunteers, but no matter how you look at it, it has costs to cover, especially on big events. And if it can't cover its costs, it can't run at all. Now, I'm sure some of you wouldn't care very much for Bodmin or Beaties or anything that runs on Steam, and that's perfectly fine. But however we like our tea, it's all very well for any of us to say we would like to see something happen, but it's then up to all of us to make it happen by turning up, paying for a ticket, and actually supporting it happening. If you want to see a particular engine at a particular railway but don't pay for a ticket or don't throw a few pennies in the nearest donation box when you show up to see it, it's hard to pass off your presence alone as support. You know the old phrase our forefathers used to say, you don't get nothing for nothing, but then we're also becoming familiar with the phrase, this is why we can't have nice things. Don't misunderstand, I'm not getting angry at all rail fans here, and if the success of certain events in 2017 have been anything to go by, it's hard to imagine the Enthusiast Gala will completely go away. But when you have a handful of foamers stabbing their keyboards in protest when a railway puts a higher price on their events, even if it's just for one weekend a year, only to show up at the line side without contributing anything, it only makes you want to break the record deliberately so the message has a chance to sink in. The railway isn't run just for your engine's convenience. It has to make money. I'm Chris, and I'm here to gauge the issue. 